gonna make you go. You don't have to travel this big bad world all on your own. Yes, it's better. Yes, it's better. This is the Palaha Chautauqua, and you're watching live with your host, Christopher Palaha. Cha-ching! So, I'm coming to you an hour early today because I've got some stuff to do in about mm, 45 minutes. And so, thank you guys. I know that this little time switch is going to confuse a lot of people, and we're missing literally like two-thirds of our audience right now because they're expecting it to be in an hour. It's unprecedented. It's not the norm. I apologize. I will make in the future announcements when this kind of thing happens. But um, I wanted to get this show out because I have a special guest on today. You know him and you love him. His name is Jesse Hutch. And about a year ago, he told me a story. Um, and it, was, it blew my mind. And as he was telling me the story, I was like, you know what? Can, you, can, we, can we do this on, the, on my Chautauqua? Can we tell the story live and he was like yeah man yeah I'd like that and so this was basically last December so it's almost been a year and um and I, I wanted to bring him on so he's got a story that's gonna blow your minds I thought I had a pretty good one about about life and death and he's got one that tops mine and interestingly enough he's also somebody who has felt the hand of God work in his life and the 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 end results have been have been fascinating to watch in his life and Jesse's life. Again, this is all the idea of how are we created in God's image, and what is the character of Christ. So that's the theme. And I'm bringing people on. Like last week, I wanted Don to come in and talk. Hi from Venezuela. Uh, I wanted Don to come and talk because she is somebody who is a light bearer, and I believe that Jesse is too. Uh, you meet actors, and I'm not somebody who brings on a lot of actors, as you know. This is actually probably, like, other than Jill Wagner and Rain Wilson, who acts, but who is m more philosophical than than the reason he was on, you know, was you know for, for a gag and commencement speech and stuff. I don't... And then, of course, there was the Christmas stuff. But, like, yeah, I think that this is one of the first actors I've brought on in a long time, if not, if not ever. Uh, so, with no further ado... I'm going to bring on Jesse Hutt. Invited. Let's see if he accepts the call. <clears throat> Let me see. There he is, man. Hi, Jesse. Hey. How you doing? I'm good. Welcome to my hotel. I have. Man, uh, you've got a uh, you've got a, a couch and a picture behind you with some mountains. Yeah, and a, and a plug-in. Yeah, yeah, a little outlet. Uh, yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. It's like a little peekaboo plug-in. I'm wearing a, a, a tank top, so... Uh, I know. I, I we just, just saw people. that. I was like, I need to go put one on, but I don't have one. Like, where's my hat? Where's my, you actually dressed up. I appreciate it. So I hit you uh, this morning. You'd agreed to come on at 4 o'clock like a week ago. Uh, then I hit you a, a little bit ago and was like, hey, dude, my I didn't know that my wife had planned a, something with my son at 4. Do you mind if we do it at 3? And so yeah. you uh, you graciously accommodated me, and I appreciate it. So I want to jump straight to the chase. And I'm sorry that I'm not giving you a lot of, a lot of, a lot of pre-love here, but <laughs> you told me a story back in December in New Jersey. And it was like quick, cause you were like, you know, this is the thing that happened to me. And as we were talking, people kept coming up to us and interrupting us. And we both had, we both got called out to the floor, uh -huh. but it blew my mind, man. Your story blew my mind. And what I'd love to do in this half, I have you for about a half an hour. What I'd love to do in this half hour is hear your story, hear you tell it. And then I just wanted to talk to you because I didn't know this about you, but you're, you're like an incredible man of faith and you, you wear your faith loud and proud. Uh, and I didn't Amen. know that until rather recently, uh, just because I, you know, like the paths, like when they cross, they cross. And, mm -hmm. and ours have only intersected twice in the last year. And the first time was your story that you're about to tell. And then the second time, this summer, I learned so much more about you. And I'm curious if the one event is related to the second, like is, is related to your faith. So I wanted to talk to you about that too. But mm. 
Go for it, man. Tell me the story, where you were working, how it all happened, the whole thing. Okay, so uh, I was in, did I, was I, did I just enter first year college? No, no, not yet. Uh, well, maybe, yeah. Yeah, you get it, it's all muddled. <laughs> uh, anyway, I was a whitewater raft guide at the time. And uh, I had already been doing it a couple of years. So it wasn't like my first rodeo. Uh, it wasn't unknown to me. It was actually very comfortable, very known. Uh, something that I did pretty much six days a week. Uh, I would do tr two trips back to back sometimes. Uh, so this was on the Ottawa River on the east coast of Canada. Okay. And it's uh, class five, uh, class five rapids, uh, anywhere from class one to class five. So where this particular story occurs is on a class five rapid. It was called the Coliseum. And so now, real was... quick, describe a class five, like class five is where it's tumultuous, white water, big, big. Yeah, big I mean, uh, there's a lot of factors that come into what a class is, such as the water uh, speed, uh, maybe how narrow or how wide it may be. Uh, but yes, it all comes down to kind of the surface, uh, what happens on the surface. But it's funny because what happens on the surface of a river is determined by what's under it. And so there's three standing waves at this particular rapid, uh, one, two, and three is on a bit of an angle. And we always say in the industry, most people use a cuss word, but uh, in my case, uh, if you're gonna screw up, it says screw up straight. So if you're gonna hit a wave and you know you're not gonna do well, just get as much momentum as you can and hit it straight. Now I had a great team of people with me that day. I had a bunch of guests on, uh, there were 12 foot Moravia rafts and we had 12, 12 guests on. I had a second guide in the front. I'm in the back, single oar, and we're doing great. We're flying down, we're coming down. We hit it with good speed. And like a lot of trips, everybody hits it. They have a great time. They're like, woo! They put their arms up and go, woo! <laughs> and that's when the momentum starts to die. Not the best, but we, we went straight up. And we're pretty much, you pretty much stand up. And I can see the guide, you know, uh, about 13 feet uh, above me. And the two guys in the front, these huge bodybuilder dudes, really awesome guys, they were just having a great time. And they both fell. Boom! So they come down and they go, and they hit me and they grab onto my life jacket on the way. So I'm, I'm pulled right over the back of the raft. And we have a little strap in the raft that you can hook one foot under so that in events like this, you don't just bail right away. Right. So I got that and I'm like, nah, it's all good. They'll let go. We'll move on. So boom. And, and they just kind of were hanging on for a bit because they're trying to get back into the raft, which is not going to happen. Uh, so not entirely their fault. I mean, there's also the water pouring down behind us so we start surfing this wave now so now our raft's going up and back and up and back and i'm still keeping it straight because as soon as we turn we're dumping right and i was like i don't necessarily want to dump so i can get out of this <clears throat> um but now i'm kind of getting waterboarded so i'm going i'm going in the water out of the water in the water out of the water and i'm i'm trying to catch my breath and i'm and i'm already sort of struggling at this point and i realized that we're just going to keep surfing this and i i can't i can't get up these guys are still hanging on for dear life, which makes sense. That's probably what I would do yep. if I fell out of the raft in a class five rapid. So at some point I'm like, I'm going to have to bail. Like I can't do this anymore. I keep getting waterboarded and I'm trying to breathe. And so anyway, uh, I, I pop my foot out and I go with them. So I'm like, all right, I'll just pop up and swim. Now there is at this particular part of the river, if I just happened to be in the right place at the right time and it all kind of lined up. So what happened was I went down to something that all the old timers, uh, they call the green room. So that means that you go under the top current and you go down with another current and you go to a lower current that runs beneath the surface. And that's maybe 15 to 25 feet down. And so, so I kind of knew that happened because my ears popped right away. I, I felt the pain. I was like, ah, okay. I clearly went down very fast. Uh, all the pressure on my head. I feel it. All right. Don't panic. You know, like I said, I'd already been doing this probably for three or four years at that point. And so I was like, all right, just relax. When the river's done, it'll spit me out. And I'm, uh, I'm kind of waiting and I'm hanging on all my energy. I, I got a bit of oxygen obviously from when I went under, but I'm not running at full, full capacity here. And finally, I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to swim. So I try to swim and I, I just can't. I can still feel the pressure closing in on me. And I, it feels like I'm, my legs are getting stuck together and I'm getting whipped around and upside down. And I, I don't know which way's up. 
Crazy. And they, they call it the green room because, yeah, the sun's out and it's a beautiful day. But when you open your eyes and look, it's just all green. So I can't, can't really tell which way's up. I remember trying to sacrifice like a little bit of water, uh, air, trying to see which way bubbles would go, if that's possible. And, uh, and I just seemed to think like I'm, I'm so discombobulated. I, I don't even know what way to swim. And, and then I, I was, I tried to swim again and I couldn't. And I was like, okay, well, common sense says save your energy, save your oxygen, save what power I have left and just ride this out. So I, uh, that's what I did. I just kind of hung out and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm holding on to everything. And then I'm like, all right, is it going to let me go? Cause you know, your logical brain kicks in and yeah. And, and you, and, and you know what, where you are and you know what's happening. Right. But, but, but then I start to feel my, my body, my, what it was naturally made to do, it starts kicking in. And so I, I can feel my body starting to try to breathe. It's like, you know, you start doing that. Do you have any idea how long you've been at this point? Uh, no, no idea. I have no idea. I have no idea at this point. It's a complete, it happens so fast and so slow all at the same time. Yeah, dude. It's and, t- and so, uh, so I start doing that whole thing when you go <laughs> and, and that's when I kind of was like, Oh man, this isn't good. Like I'm, I'm running out of oxygen here. This is, it'd be really nice to, to hit the surface here now. And, uh, and then that gets more violent and, uh, and now I'm, I'm almost using my energy to try and stop myself from doing what I know naturally it wants to do, which is just breathe. And, and I fought that as long as I could. And I remember that was kind of the freaky part for me where it was like, okay, I can't like, you, you just, I'm trying to tense, but relax. Cause I want to save my energy. And it was just this weird, weird dichotomy of like me versus myself. That's what it felt like. Yeah, sure. And, uh, and so anyway, I go through all the motions, man. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like holding it and holding it. And eventually my body wins and it just goes, <gasps> and I'm like, and when you breathe water, that's very different than when you drink it, you know, have soup, take a sip of water. It's very different when you breathe water. Uh, it feels like someone pours concrete into your system like that. And I was just full. Uh, I couldn't breathe anymore, but my body was still trying to get oxygen. So I, I was like, literally doing this over and over and I'm, and I can't stop it. And I'm completely lost control at this point, uh, physically. And now mentally I'm starting to go, I'm done. Like I'm done. I, I don't know what else to do. And, and I did, I definitely went through this arc of panic. And then very quickly, I remember reaching the state where I, I was like, I'm done. Like I, I can't do anything anymore. I'm done logically. I'm done physically. I'm done emotionally. And I, I remember saying, all right, God, uh, I'm, I'm completely in your hands now. And it was in that time that I, I, I just, I kept, my eyes were closed. I had no energy to even open them. I had no energy to swim. I had let everything go and I was literally just floating. And I, I remember feeling like what I had left kind of left my fingers and my arms and it came into here. And I, and that's all that I had. And all I heard was my heartbeat and the water. Oh, so so it was like you, my heartbeat was so loud too because my ears had already popped i was underwater and and it, it feels like you're in a soundproof room almost you know and everything's i'm sure you've done that you lay in the bathtub yeah. and you and yeah so it's like that times you know a million because there's so much more water weight around you right and so all i could hear was and i could hear the water And then eventually my heart slowed and slowed and slowed. And then the heart disappeared and I couldn't hear that anymore. And then all I could hear was the water. And it was like, and then it was the most peaceful moment of my life right there. And I was like, all right, Lord, I guess, I guess this is where I find out what happens next. (laughs) And, uh, and then everything went black and dark. And I do not remember how long I was under. Um, The next thing I remember is I sort of, I say my eyes fell open because I had, I, I couldn't even move. And I remember uh, blurry images of people uh, screaming and hitting me in the chest. And then, and then I blacked out again. And then I remember being in a pressure chamber in a hospital and uh, they put me in one of those pressure chambers and where it goes and they try to regulate your ears and the pressure in your body and bring it back to the pressure that you're actually in on land. And so, uh, and that's all I remember. Um, Apparently a different, set of uh, raft um, folks that were ahead of us they found me 
Uh, so I went under the surface past our entire crew and um, they found me like a couple kilometers down the river. Uh, Jeez, that's, it's crazy. And uh, so the fact that I don't have brain damage <laughs> to the, to the extent that I, I should, you know, and my ears work. Uh, uh, I've had to get surgery on sort of just my breathing canals, just uh, to have them opened up a bit. And uh, I have a weird thing when I, you know, like if I drink cold water or if I, uh, funny enough, I mean, I'm in the business of talking, but uh, my saliva will run backwards and it'll my, my vocal cords will rub together. Yeah. And so I can wake up and like be in this Johnny Cash mode, like, like that and it feels like i've been yelling at a concert all night but that's just sort of some of the side effects of this but and it's because you and it's because you were flattened out inside basically the pressure just like condensed everything together is that the idea or we don't know I, I don't really know i mean and again that's not even i mean it could have been worse like i, I should have died i, right. I should have I, I mean i should have stayed dead maybe that's the right way of putting it <laughs> uh because being underwater for that long um I mean, we sort of guesstimate that I, I was maybe underwater for 11 minutes Holy cow. Or, or, or longer. And um, that's, that's a long time. I mean, um, but, you know, like sit down and put a timer on for 11 no, minutes. No, no, that's and like a, a, a imagine it still kind of blows my mind to this day. And so uh, I, we, we have a pool and I'll go in and try to hold my breath. And I'm down for like maybe a minute and 45 seconds when that terror starts to creep in. And that's when I start considering that I'm actually holding my breath. It takes me about a, a minute and 40 to like start to panic. And yeah. then the question of how long can I panic for? And dude, I can't go longer than like 15 seconds before I just stand up and I'm like, it's not worth it. I cannot imagine because I'm somebody who, who on, on a regular basis goes outside and just sees how long I can hold my breath for. Yeah. And I try to like, I try to push that panic off and try to understand why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling. Did you, and, did you know God before? Were you a Christian your whole life? Or did you, and did you, were you a kid who was praying and you had a relationship your whole life? Yeah, I did. Uh, I asked the Lord into my heart when I was five uh, with my grandmother. And, uh, and so, I mean, there's definitely a different understanding and a depth of faith that has grown as I've gotten older. Um, but, but yeah, it, it was all, there was always some, I always kind of felt the hand of God. I always felt peace uh, in certain areas. I always felt something guiding me, even when I didn't quite understand it at a young age. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I totally like that was for me when I was going through that. And I literally, like, I honestly just felt like, all right, Lord, like I actually have peace. It was, it, it was quite honestly, one of the scariest times uh, quickly followed by one of the most peaceful times. Peace. And, uh, you know, people ask me, did you cross the other side? And there, there was, there was none of that. It was all, was all on this side. Uh, but I definitely was in that moment where I felt what it was like to be completely hopeless, uh, help, oh, sorry, helpless, um, and not be able to do anything yeah. because you, you can't beat the river. I can't. It, it... And, and what did you, okay. So you survive, you wake up in the hospital, you're in the pressure chamber and what did you do? Was it a year later or was it a little longer than that? How, how much long, how much later did you, and then you actually got back in the, yeah. Like, so yeah, no, I, it, it was a, just a matter of, uh, it was pretty quick. Actually. I, I went back pretty quick. I was, I mean, I loved doing that for a living and I, I was like, well, Hey, if you have no reason why I can't go do what I do, then why sit around? And so, uh, no, it was fast. It wasn't, I don't even think it was a month. Um, I, I, you, but, but, you, I remember you told me, you said, if I didn't get back in, then that fear yeah. was going to settle in. I didn't want it to, I didn't want oh, to have lose to the yeah. fear. So what is the way? Before I could even go to work, I, I did go back and I was like, just being around water. I was like freaked right out. And, uh, so I went to the, uh, I went to our river safety uh, guide he's he's the head of river safety and i said hey uh, i'm pretty freaked i said i think i'm gonna need to go up and i'm gonna need to swim this rapid in my life jacket um and prove to myself that i could do this that i don't even know if prove to myself is the right way of putting it it was right. like I, I had to i had to put myself in that situation again and so i uh yeah he said yeah okay well i you know uh we this is our last trip of the day on on whatever day and uh i'll, I'll go up with you so 
uh, we got in the vehicle and we, we didn't say anything to each other. It was like a 45 minute drive. We drove, uh, we got the Zodiac off the trailer. We put it in um, and it's this high powered Zodiac for doing safety. It was wicked. And, and he said, all right, well, I'll, I'll drive you. Um, uh, so, sorry, he still didn't say anything because we, we already knew the plan. And so we didn't talk the whole drive. We unloaded. We didn't talk. He got in the Zodiac. I started walking up the side of the river and I made my way all the way up to the top of this Coliseum Rapid again. Nobody's around. There's nobody outside kayaking. There's, it's kind of the end of the day. The sun's just starting to drop. Right. And there's a, there's a big rock kind of cliff at the top. And I got up there and I'm honestly, I'm praying. I'm going, Lord, all right, uh, I need your help. I, I want to face this fear. I don't want to be afraid of the water. I know that you run the water. And after everything that happened, I just, I don't want to be afraid of this. And I, I want to overcome it, um, but I need your help. And literally the clouds came in and covered the sun and it started raining. It got so dark. I was like, what, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> this, is, this is dark. <laughs> and, and I had to like psych myself up because I could, I could see all the rapids, right? All three standing waves and they're, and they're big. Like the first wave's 15 feet. Oh, that's crazy. The second one's 12. The third one's maybe six to eight. It's crazy. And, and I, I got all my gear on, the same gear that I drown in. And I'm, I'm standing there and I'm going, okay, I'm, and I'm, you know, and uh, way down below in the Zodiac, uh, he gives the signal, right? He, uh, he holds his paddle, holds the paddle straight up. And I'm like, all right, I'll hold my fist. Excuse me, hold my fist straight up. Like, I'm, I'm ready. And I'm like, yeah, I'm ready, right? Like, yeah, 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 I got this. I'm ready. And I'm, I'm like, stand on the edge and I got to walk away. And then I walk back to the edge and I walk away. And I'm like, I just, have, I just have to walk right off of this thing. I can't even do this. So I just looked at the horizon and I walked just straight off this cliff and just pin dropped into the water. Mm. And at that point, I'm like, it's over now. There's, there's no turning back. So I come up and the only way you can swim these rapids is just be aggressive, right? So, so I start aggressive swimming head first, hard as I can. And at the surface of the water, it is crystal clear. Like it's just smooth because all of it's dropping off, right? Going over this drop, which is then in turn creating this first giant wave. Yeah. And so I'm, so there's me in my helmet, right? My, my life jacket and smooth as glass. And I'm going, okay. And man, I came down over that top. I just swam and screamed and gave it everything I had. Came through the first wave. I was like, so stoked. I was like, yes, we're going to make the rest. We're good. Hit the next wave. I'm just everywhere, come up, swim through it, hit the third wave, all the way down. Uh, safety uh, Zodiac picks me up. He still doesn't say a word. We didn't say anything to each other. We drive over. We, we load the Zodiac on the trailer. We get in the truck, 45-minute drive out. He drops me at the side of the road by where my car was. Still, the, he still didn't say anything. He just turned to me, and he looks at me, and he goes, and he holds his hand out. We shook hands. He got in the truck and left, and then I just started crying. I was like... <laughs> was like tears of joy mixed with yeah uh just sort of fear uh everything kind of hit me and i was just very thankful man uh to god and and i still use that i learned a lot working on the river and i learned a lot being around nature from god and i think that i utilize that in my walk of faith and and i mean there's a, there's a lot of lessons right like even like what i said there's always you never want to go the same speed as the river. You want to try to go faster than it or slower than it, but don't let the river set your speed. And I feel that with life as well. And, and trying to follow God and have this life of faith, you, you need to, you need to either go faster than it or you got to go slower, but, but you can't just kind of roll with what life gives you. Uh, I don't think that's walking on the narrow path. Um, and I mean, I could go on, on and on about no, I feel lessons that I've learned. Yeah, I actually want to have you back on because I want to I want to hold true to the half hour format of this thing because I want people to be able to ingest it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But let me ask you a question. Um, uh, you said something about God runs the water. Mm -hmm. Like that struck me. That's cool. And that if you put that into your life, like God runs the water, God runs the day, God runs your money, God runs your and you start applying that to everything. I don't know. I just think that's an amazing testimony, man. It's a really cool testimony. Yeah, thank I'm so you. glad uh, that you were able to come on and share it because when I heard it, it was, uh, you know, I, of course, have my story. Um, ho ho hold on one second. Hold on one second. Yeah. <laughs>
Hi, everybody. What's shaking? I didn't see any of these comments. So I have to go back and read these later. Oh, sorry about that. I'm back. Um, yeah, you got to, uh, you should, you should go. Can you go through them? Can you see them individually or am I scrolling them for you? Uh, they just keep feeding on mine, I think. I, I don't think I can do anything. Let's see. Anyway, yeah, you got a lot of love, man. Oh, yeah, um, I can go back. Yeah, well, uh, pe pe uh, people are awesome. And uh, I don't so, know. There, there, there's a reason that you go through everything. And I, I know it's easy to say that sometimes. Um, right. But I find anything that, that feels like opposition or it feels like death, or maybe it is death, uh, you always come out the other side better with God. If yeah. you don't have God, I don't know what you're coming out the other side as, yeah, to, to be honest with you. You know, do you feel like your life has been made richer because you've sort of died? I mean, do you feel yeah. like, things, yeah. I know that's a hard question, yep. but I mean, no, I, like, I, I, absolutely. I mean, like I was supposed to be dead and then I wasn't and everything after that was kind of gravy. Like I've looked at the rest of my life as a gift. Do you similarly sort of approach? I mean, did you always want to be an actor? Or how did that, how did that fall into your life? No, no, I, I thought I was going to be a raft guide, man. I was, I was good on the river growing a beard out and being in the sun every day and going through these rapids. <laughs> uh, I, I loved it. <laughs> I love it. Part of me still wants to go do that. Well, how did you get involved in acting then? I mean, I just think it's crazy that here's a guy who's, you, you're on the river, you're just doing your thing, you almost die, you should be dead. You're literally taking miles down the water. You pop up, somebody sees you, they grab you, they sit, your life is saved. God saves you for a reason. I mean, I don't think that things happen without reason, without, you know, and he's got this plan for your life. And then all of a sudden you're in a position where you can talk about it and people yeah. want to hear it because you're an actor and they love your movies. And congratulations, by the way, you've got a movie with Jen Lilly, right? Coming out on GAC. Yeah, I'm, I'm filming it right now. That's why I'm in this. Oh, is that why you're that's here? Why have, that's why I have this. That's why you got the mountains here. in the back. Where yeah, are you? That's why in I'm in Vancouver? a hotel. <laughs> are you in Vancouver? Where'd they put you up? Uh, I'm, I'm in Kelowna. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Very and, cool. Uh, yeah, and, and Jen has an awesome heart for God. And uh, so it's pretty cool to work with someone who, who feels the same. Uh, it feels the it, same way. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, a, there's a massive difference, man. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I would say there's certain things in your life that kind of pop out. But God's always working in the small details that don't even come across as spectacular or out of the ordinary. But he's definitely in, like when my parents divorced, I think that was a big that was a big shift for me in my faith, uh, even at the age of 11. And then when, when this happened, uh, I definitely reflected on life and was like, wow, okay. I had an entirely new respect, not just f for the river, but who made the river. And, and I had a whole different respect for it because for the longest time, I sort of viewed God as a father because when my parents divorced, I, I didn't have that in my life. So some people will go, oh, that's why you believe in God. Cause you, you know, you need it. You need it to like, kind of have that crutch because your dad wasn't around and i'm like no it's not that simple like it's not that easy i think it's it was me realizing that wow uh my earthly father is gone and my heavenly father has always been here i just didn't know that and then when i drown and i come out of that i go wow uh i shouldn't be here that doesn't make any sense uh and it's amazing how God is the, is the God that runs a kingdom that down here, a lot of the times it doesn't make sense. It's flipped, right? Uh, you, I mean, we, we've all kind of heard that being said before. Yeah. Yeah. You got a lot of wisdom, brother. I could talk to you for hours. Um, does anybody have a question for Jesse that you want to ask him? Did you feel when you said that you said it was peaceful and you were praying, do you feel that, that you were in God's presence at that moment? Like, was it just the river and the sound of the river and the sound of your oxygen, like, like passing out? Like, like there's a very, I'm sure the scientist can get on here who's, who does not believe in God and say, listen, this is the scientific reasons why you felt peace. Your dopamine's got kicked off. You were about to pass yeah. out. No more oxygen. Yeah. You were fading yeah. to black. 
and it was a, l a lulling and you were being drifted down like womb like in the river but you said this peacefulness and i can and you're such a beautiful storyteller man like the sounds and the, and the way you just brought us there so thank you for telling that story as well as you did um did you feel god's presence in that moment uh i think it was a genuine yeah you're you're right all that all that science stuff but i mean who who made that who who, who made the dopamine who who set your heart in motion who you know those are questions i think people really need to ask uh i feel that if you're going to believe something then you should you should run that ramp of reason until you take the leap of faith live it out don't don't just take a piece of it don't just nitpick the table and take what you think is good if you're going to believe in in something right no matter what that religion may or may not be go for it don't 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 be a pansy don't don't beat around the bush and just take that. Oh, that slogan's cool. That'll look good on Instagram. It, this is a, it's a life. It's, it's an actual base of life. I mean, for me, uh, it, it's extremely important that I get into God's word, that I read scripture, that I pray, that I understand. And, and again, do I get it right? No, but I'm, I'm working on it. And when I was drowning that piece, that felt like legitimate. Didn't feel like I was in heaven. I, I don't, it wasn't one of those. I, I, I don't, right. I don't, when I read scripture, I don't necessarily, I can't find scripture to fully back up that. Like I went to the other side and then came back. I, you know, sure. uh, I didn't, I didn't experience any of that. I, I just felt this innate peace and I know that that wasn't for me. I, I know that I didn't just make that up and kind of give up because my state of mind and my state of being was kind of in chaos and, and, and I remember actually having the, the full on thought of going, all right, like I actually trust you, Lord. I actually am okay with being in your hands because I'm done with whatever I was trying to do with mine. And, and that felt fantastic. I wasn't, I wasn't scared. And yeah. I wasn't freaked out. Now, do I still get scared in life? Yeah. I, I have of course. different fears in different ways. Uh, you know, I have three kids, uh, I'm married, I, I have all kinds of stuff that comes at me living in this, in this world. Um, but when I travel, um, as you mentioned, I'm traveling right now, so I'm not with my, I'm away from my family. And uh, I like to check out different churches when I travel. So I went to this church this morning and we're just having a great time of worship. And, and I um, just felt like I just felt like I had to get on, get on the floor and like kneel and not do what we normally do. And uh, I tell you, man, I just like was just weeping in, under the spirit. Like I just felt like God, I, I felt like I had to kneel before my king. And it was like, I, I felt, I just saw this image of like putting my sword down and being like, man, I give you my, my life. The sword is not even mine. You know, I mean, scripture says it's the full armor of God. It's the sword of the spirit. Um, and so I was just highly impacted today and reminded, I think, that that when we're done down here, when I was drowning, I reached this point where all the stuff you stress about, all the stuff that, you, that you're excited about, all the stuff that's a victory, the stuff that hurts, the stuff that, that you're, you're stressed about, you can't take any of that with, with you when you go. Yeah, None yeah. of it. You, you can't take the feeling. You can't take the you don't get a bucket like all right fill the bucket and like and we know that we've heard that but do we live that like do do we honestly live our day going hey you know what this actually compared to eternity doesn't even it, it, like read the book of ecclesiastes it can come across very alike it's all chaff in the wind nothing matters it's like it's oh, called, wow, yeah, right? yeah yeah that sounds kind of negative that. yeah Sounds, I, I do though. You could almost say, I, "Me too." You can almost say it sounds negative. But today, this morning, I was like, "Man, that's actually one of the biggest reliefs." It's it's so joyful to go. Hey, I'm thinking about those bills that need to be paid, or I don't know what's going to happen next month, or I don't know what's going on with this job, or like my kid's going through something and I don't know the outcome. If the, if the Lord came back today, if I all of a sudden drown, I can't take that with me. That's not even part of the equation. How I live my life what I did for, you know, with the name of Jesus Christ, uh, that, that matters, that that's going to come out. And so that's what I want to work on. That's what I need to, to be getting into more and more. Dude, how many times in life do people feel like they are drowning, drowning with their bad health, drowning in debt, mm -hmm. 
thing in a miserable marriage or an abusive relationship or with addiction, mm -hmm. and they feel like they are about to go under. And you are an example of somebody, you're like a modern day Jonna, dude. Like you were drowning, you got taken by the river, you got put into the green room, and then you live to tell the story of the glory of God and the grace of God and the power of God and what faith and what a life in faith. I'm, you know, it isn't about being an actor. It isn't about like what we do. There's something, I don't know. I just think that, uh, I think it's an incredible story. I also love the fact that you went back to the river right after and you were not gonna let it run your life. Like you took the fear. So there's so many lessons and I just want people to, I want people to watch this and listen to it. And I wish I were, I wish I had the time to dissect it. And I wish I were a smarter person to be like, well, this is, you know, and point all these things together. But like, it gave me, it, you blessed me in, in New Jersey when I heard it last year. And I know that you're gonna bless people. I'm looking at the, the reports. You got close to 300 people watching right now. And I'm, I'm watching people just have chills. Um, do you mind, would it be awkward if I asked you to pray for everybody who's watching this and just pray us out today? Like I always say a little prayer at the end of the Chautauqua. <laughs> And I just, you yeah, know, yeah. I, I, I pray for the people who are watching and for their week to come and stuff. Do you mind doing that? No, not at all, man. I uh, cool. appreciate that. Well, Heavenly Father, I just feel led to pray the form of God today. Because uh, it says in your scripture that this is not a battle of flesh and blood, but this is against the darkness and the spirits of principalities. And so, Heavenly Father, I just pray for the uh, helmet of salvation to be upon us. I believe that. That helmet protects our eyes and our ears and our tongues. I also believe that we need to be cleared and renewed in our minds from the inside so that once we have that salvation and the understanding of what you did for us, Lord, in our minds, we can operate differently. Um, our tongue is also meant to speak and lift people up, not tear people down. So I pray that we would do that with the helmet of salvation today. I also pray for the breastplate of righteousness, Father. Um, may we be taught by the Holy Spirit what righteousness really is in today's culture and in today's society. May that breastplate also protect our hearts, Father. For Scripture also says that from your heart comes the wellspring of life, Father. It's the, it's the stuff inside of us that what we speak comes out of our heart, Father God. So I pray that you would um, forgive us of any sins that we may have committed today that weren't pleasing to you. And I also pray that you put the belt of truth upon us, Lord. Uh, there's a lot of truth out there today a lot of claim truth and I believe it's being thrown around as though it's uh, it's just something very simple and uh, in one way it is Lord uh, but I pray that you would show us what truth really is uh, we need your truth down here we need the kingdom of heaven um, to be fully operational down here Lord and, and we're the called out people we're the ecclesia we're the church so I pray that you would help us to be the church to those around us today I pray that you'd shot our feet with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace Father God it's your peace which passes all understanding that guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And so may we walk in that, Lord. Wherever we go, let us walk in your peace, not our own. Also give us the shield of faith. Um, so we need that shield, Father God, to hold up in front of us, uh, to protect from the enemy's arrows, Lord, to protect from attacks. And so I also pray for the, the sword of the Spirit, God, which is the word of God. May we get into your scripture. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I shall not sin against thee, Father. May we learn your scriptures. And uh, I pray that you would just put this full armor upon each and every one of us today so that we can walk knowing that if we feel like we're drowning today, Father, um, the physical is not what really is happening. It's the spirit behind all of it, Father. And so uh, I just pray a blessing upon everyone today as they uh, go forth with the rest of the day, wherever they are in life. And I pray that they'd be encouraged today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray these things. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Jesse, I pray that you are blessed, brother. Go follow Jesse Hutch right now if you haven't followed him before. Um, people are going to watch this. This is going to be seen again, again and again. And I hope that this story just, I hope that it is a blessing for as many people as who hear it. It's awesome. Thank you for coming on and Thank sharing you. today. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm down to talk anytime. Dude, I'll have you back oh. on. We need to, we all have to unpack this. <laughs> okay, well, let's do it. I'll put Thank a shirt on later. next. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll get one of those shirts. <laughs> Dude, I love you. I love your heart, man. Enjoy the rest Thank of your you. Sunday. Thank you for coming on today, Jesse. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. All right. God bless, brother. All right. You too. God, Godspeed.